Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Layout. This week I want to do something a little bit different. Um, as I believe I've mentioned in other videos and other places, I got back into the hobby about five years ago. And I didn't really know much about uh, different um, manufacturers, different car types, and etc. And when I got back, it was kind of hard to decipher what the differences between um, each manufacturer's cars kind of was and, and what was going to be the best options as far as if I wanted to build a different train. Um, this specific video is going to do with our Beth Guy and Cole Porters here. I'm going to talk about what's been produced, by who, uh, positives and negatives of all of them. And we're just going to take a close look at all of them because most of the videos I found on YouTube tend to be all review videos that will focus on one specific model. Nobody ever really kind of puts them all in one video side by side and along to kind of show off the pluses and minuses. So stay tuned and we'll go ahead and take a bit of a dive into uh, these Beth Gone Cold Forms. So our first car we're going to look at here is actually a Walther's car. Um, I think these came out sometime in the late 90s, early 2000s. I have a six-pack of them. Obviously, as you can tell, this one's a little um, has been weathered by a previous owner. Not very heavy, but it's it's got it a little bit here and there. But let's take a look at this car here. We've got our molded on end grabs, which aren't quite up to snuff today, but still look pretty good. It'll be good enough for a unit train where you won't notice it as much. Got metal wheels from the factory. I'm not totally sure if the couplers from the factory were KDs or not. As you can tell, this one has been upgraded to them if it wasn't. But uh, overall, all of our little printing's pretty nice. Everything looks fairly good on these. The big problem with them, at least in my opinion, is the color is a little bit on the dark side. Um, they could be a bit lighter, would, would really look better. But that's kind of a problem with all Walther's cars. They, they tend to be too dark. And um, when you go to weather them, they're already so dark, it's hard to um, get them to fade into a, a better, to, a, to match a prototype, so to speak. So, overall, these aren't a bad car, um, but they're, they leave a little bit more to be desired. Like you can see here, we're kind of missing some, missing some writing in there. But overall, and then too, oh, there's a little typo there, we put the Conrail after the quality. But overall, not a deal breaker. Good piece for a unit train, but not not great overall. Weight wise, they they got a good bit of weight to them. They're not too heavy. I'd add a little bit more myself, maybe a, maybe a half an ounce to an ounce, just to get them to track better. But overall, not too bad. These were um, the set I have is a six pack. I'm not sure if they were ever sold in individual cars. I believe when they originally came out, they were all in six packs, but. Let's go ahead and let's move on to the next car we're going to take a little better look at. It's going to be an Atherin Ready to Roll Beth Gon Cole Porter. So the next car in our uh, journey through Cole Porters here is going to be our um, Atherin model. These are from the Ready to Roll line. I believe these are actually based on a Western prototype. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you which one, but I think the same as the Walthers there. Not actually a based on a Conrail car specifically. They have the Conrail paint scheme and they do look pretty good. As you can see, printing looks great on them. Color overall is is pretty much better than the Walthers. It's got a little bit more orange to it than what it's showing up on camera. Um, whereas these cars in the background we'll get to in a bit, they look way too red on camera, but they don't look that red in person. They'd weather up real nice. Uh, these also came with a coal load, as you can see there on the top. But the nice part about these is these Separately applied grab irons. Those look really sharp. Um, and then all of our fine printing is very crisp and well done. Looks really good. As you can see, this one's got upgraded couplers. Has the factory metal wheels. 
Overall, not a bad car. Again, weight-wise, it's pretty good. I'd, I'd put a hair in it, but that's just me. I, I like to run my cars a little heavier. But um, overall, not a bad-looking car. Um, these still come up quite a bit for sale. They, seems, they still seem to have held their value well, but they're, they're overall, they're a nice car. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in the first part is the most difficult part about building a train of these as a Conroe model is the fact that most of these cars were all built after a Western road. There were there was only one manufacturer who's actually done us right and given us an actual Conrail prototype matching car, which we'll get to later. But with the variants Conrail had, um, kind of gives you a little flexibility to have cars with different PAL links and different heights, etc. So you can kind of, when you put together a unit train, it'll look right because there'll be different shape cars, different size cars kind of deal. So kind of helps out to have a few of these around. But overall, these aren't a bad car. Um, pretty, pretty nice. On to our next one. All right, so our next car we're looking at here, this is from Intermountain. This is from their run they did last year. Um, I believe this is actually the tooling from the old ENC shops, Hubert's um, kits. And I actually had a bunch of those I ended up selling when Scale Trains announced their car, but we'll get to that later. Um, these just came out by Intermount, and they're a little, they're still kind of, they're kind of parking back to the old Walters ones with the molded on details. We, we got a little bit of a, we got a little excited here with the G52H. I'll have to look at pictures, but that looks way too big for me. But, you know, you got your metal wheels, your uh, KD couplers, so that's nice. Um, car does have some pretty good weight to it. Again, I'd add a little bit, but, you know, just a little bit. You can always put a load in there and I'll help. Got good inside bracing detail. That looks nice. I mean, overall, not a bad car. Um, if you could get them for a good deal, I'd, I'd grab a few more of them if I could get them for the right price. But um, the big drawback is, as you can see, is this looks really, really red on camera. And it's not that red in person, but it's definitely a bit too red. Um, if you faded this car and put some grime on it, it would probably really tone it back. But it, without weathering, these look a little bit rough. But overall, not a bad car. A, a good option. If you want something that you don't have to worry about little detail parts getting broken off of, I would definitely recommend these. They're going to be pretty durable. The stirrups are on there good and well, so those aren't going to break off. But overall, pretty good car. Let's move on to uh, the next batch, which will be a pair of scale trains cars. We're going to start off with an operator and then move to a rivet counter. The next car we're looking at here, this is a Scale Trains Operator model. This is their um, lower budget models. These don't have all the separately applied grab irons, the coupler cut levers, air hoses, all the fun stuff. But they do sell that as an additional kit so you can actually add all that to the car and, and detail it yourself, which I actually have that. And I picked up a bunch of these because they, the de they just look really nice to be honest with you. The printing on them is beautiful. I mean, all the numbers, everything looks correct. Now, technically, this is not the right uh, prototype for a G252L. It's not the right car body. Um, those were, I believe, a little bit shorter and a little bit taller. I could be mistaken on that. Don't, don't hate me if I'm wrong on that, guys. But it doesn't match it exactly. But like I mentioned earlier, these are one of those things that's going to go with uh, the Walthers, the Ather, and the Intermountain, and a unit train. So I want to have some different variants in there to make the cars kind of look different. Even if they all kind of look the same, I want them to have some differences to kind of make it look more realistic. So if you watch a video from the late 90s, you've got all sorts of different cars that all look pretty close to the same, but they're all very different. So I grabbed these just for that specific purpose. But, you know, good weight to it. Probably the heaviest out of the bunch so far. Uh, metal wheels. It doesn't have a rotating bearing caps, which kind of stinks. The uh, Scale Trains couplers, which I know some people aren't a big fan of, but I haven't had any trouble with them. Um, overall, just a nice car. Very, very nice car for pretty good price. Um, definitely good to build a train out of. So let's go ahead and let's move on to my personal favorite, uh, the last one we're going to look at, which is the Rivet Counter Model. Now for my personal favorite, the Scale Trains Rivet, mo rivet Counter Model of the uh, G52X. These are awesome. They have all the little rivet details. They have all the little grab irons. They even went as far as to put the actual tr um, car number on the truck frame, which is awesome. You got rotating bearing caps. And uh, these are the correct body for this car. That's probably the coolest part about these is they actually made us a 
proper Conrail car as opposed to all the other guys that just slapped Conrail paint on something that wasn't actually Conrail's. Um, this one, as you can see, I have the coal load in it. I got these. These are This is the symmetrical style one. You can also get the one where it's got the humps in it and it looks like it was loaded out of a different kind of mine. But, you know, you got your cut levers, you got all your fine scale parts, you got your little airline. I mean, just absolutely probably the nicest cars um, we could really ask for. Great weight to them. I actually have a video of the first run of these on the channel, which if I remember, I'll, uh, I'll link in this if I can remember to do that. That uh, has just a, the first run of these cars. I think it was 24 or 5 cars all in one train that I, I, I thought they were awesome, so... Uh, if you want to see those in action. But this is going to kind of wrap up just our looking at uh, what, what you're getting into with, you know, your different uh, levels of Bethgon Cole Porter and what you, you know, what, what all's in, what you get from each manufacturer, essentially. Um, my preference so far is the Scale Trains one, but then again, if somebody's, uh, maybe somebody's modeling a Western Road that uses the Athern one that's right, then they're probably going to like that better. But um, overall, everybody's cars are pretty nice. They're a bit pricier than what you want to spend to build a unit train, but they do look good. Now I'm going to wrap this video up with a few run-by shots of these five cars all together, going by with a little couple locomotives. And, uh...